Ever say aye? aye? Aye. Okay. Minutes are adopted. Item number one, old business authorization to amend joint funding agreement with the University of Alabama, the Northington Property Access Road Improvements Project Sections 1 and 2. Ms. Standridge. Good afternoon, Council. Good afternoon. This item was briefed last week. Um, there is approximately $135,000 that the University of Alabama has um, analyzed as savings on the Northington Access Road project, and they are requesting that we move that exact $135,000 out of their funding agreement for that project and into improvements for the strip area that they will manage. Um, and you know, just to transfer over that amount of funding from the Northington Access Road into strip improvements. Um, Mr. Moore and Ms. Coleman are both here to be able to discuss scope if you have questions about that. I do. Who wants to start? M Mr. Moore, you brokered the deal. Why don't you get us into it? <laughs> and then, Summer, you can w walk us through the structures to be taken care of. Sir, so uh, this request is from the university uh, for the Northington Road project. There's approximately $135,000 in savings from the bid price. They approached us, and this has been an ongoing probably for six to eight months, of trying to do some general maintenance and safety improvements uh, on the strip in between, uh, or during the summer months in between, really, the end of school and the start back of the fall. Uh, about two weeks ago, well, actually, yes, this Wednesday will be our second meeting. Two weeks ago, we had our kind of pre-planning implementation meeting as public safety centric for uh, fall 23's football season. Uh, Matt Fajak, Tim Leppard, Chad Tindall, uh, Chief Hooks, uh, Ralph, really kind of everybody on the UA side and their counterparts from the city side. So Dr. Rush, uh, Scott Holmes, uh, Chief Clark, myself, Summer, uh, sat down and kind of tried to identify some quick items that we could look at for improvement. Some of the ones we have identified right now is adding some um, kind of speaker and camera type systems to the police precinct area. Speaker uh, Mr. what? Speaker, to help communicate if you needed to do crowd disbursement. Um, Mr. O'Leary noted some fiber improvements in the area that will be running the precinct that should address some cameras that we'd also like to install that get disrupted due to uh, excessive crowds and Wi-Fi that can kind of cause the signal to go down. That should be cleared up. I'm sure you're familiar with the yellow kind of loading zone area. Um, we are working with uh, Ms. Coleman and the UA side to figure out a little bit safer way for what I'll call the ride sharing, the party carts, joy rides, Lyft, Uber, et cetera. Kind of restripe that, get that cleaned up. There's some trip hazards out in the area that have been, been identified by uh, Mr. Green and then the UA's facilities maintenance group that we're looking at trying to get on some of the intersections improved for some general cleanup. And then also, too, there's also some discussion about lighting in some areas that we're going to talk about. I think it's this Wednesday that we would like to get moving in some areas to do a little bit faster. Okay. Summer, you want to? Also includes um, new Between signage. where and where? Between, between where and where? It would basically be from, um, what is the road back there? Gray, not Gray Street. I would say one. potentially Red Drew. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would say maybe to Campus Way, right at the Publix intersection. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't punch too much past that unless it's some signage. So kind of in that core concentrated block, two blocks. Okay, and and who's executing the work and who's overseeing it? So the university's the overseeing. The Construction Department will oversee that. They will um, issue either contracts or purchase orders to their contractors. They will come out and handle um, any of the repairs, and um, that that actually helps us out because between my group and Selvin's group, we just we we don't have the manpower to do it in that timely fashion um, in that one month period so that that helps us out a lot and they'll manage it and we we can use this um, savings of money to take care of it okay one other observation that I'll put in here and then I'll I'll let the other members um, this this loading zone which runs from Red Drew to Frank Thomas I mm -hmm. think essentially that we we got rid of the parallel parking there and we converted it to loading reserve loading zone I, I have never seen it utilized I routunely um, several times a week we'll see the trucks parked they in the center them. lane mm -hmm. of University Boulevard and anybody who wants a pizza or burrito or whatever is parked in those lanes so I would ask that if if this is encompassing that area, that I, I would suggest 
that we include whoever that is, our traffic engineering people, reassess that, please. Okay. And we I can talk about also um, restriping and painting for it to be a, a ride share area or a delivery drop off, but not a not like a Cisco truck, but just a. Um, Uber well, well or right now it is they park routinely there. and regularly used to for people right. to park, mm -hmm. and there's no enforcement. That I know of, and it's, that's how it always sits. Okay, any, uh, Mr. Crow, Mr. Fail, any questions? Sure. John, is there a cap on how much money we can spend? One thirty-five. One thirty-five. Not 135. to exceed. That just seems like a lot of work. Can we do it for one thirty-five? Yes. Half? Yes, and I mean, I've, I've, I walked the area with Tim Leppard um, a couple of weeks ago, and we went, we noted some things. I think it's totally doable. And I do think, uh, and Summer touched on this, and I, I was remiss, I, I should have pointed this out earlier. I did speak with um, public works and facilities and grounds on those dollars. Both reiterated Ms. Coleman's point that really from a capacity manpower, be able to actually execute it within that 60-day window, it would be more advantageous for the university that we looked at doing it internally. And their recommendation was to let them knock it out. Um, I think if, if council would like, we could bring back once we get through kind of the pre-planning process tomorrow. Goal is to have everything essentially up and running by Labor Day or uh, by the Texas game, which I believe is the 10th um, or 9th, excuse me. Have that work through. We could bring you back some of the specs and show you kind of what we're trying to do in that area in concert, if that's something council would be interested in. Right. Any other questions? Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Got a second, John. Mr. Fail. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Thank Motion you. is approved. Item number two, or item number one on new yes, business. Not, votes. Authorization yeah. to amend contract agreement with the Para Foundation for improvements to Bowers Park. Hey, good afternoon, Council. Good afternoon. This is to amend a previous contract with the Para Foundation from 235000 down to 100000 uh, this is due in large part to the ask that both Tuscaloosa Tourism or Visit Tuscaloosa and the Para Board came to us for what those improvements may be and for us finding cost savings for the city to be able to provide fiber and Wi-Fi work that originally was going to be required. That was for the Dixie Youth yes. deal, right? That never happened. Correct. So this is the original contract we signed with them for that. Correct. So we're wanting to change that just for to make it 100. Yeah, lowering the amount just from the list of asks that they provided with us, the amount come in came in a lot lower than the previous ask. Mr. Chairman, can I ask another question? Yeah, sure. Yeah, just so. I mean, you said fiber. What else? I mean, they're going to up, aren't they going to upgrade the ball fields and? Yeah, they're going to provide. Going to happen for that. They're going to do air units in the press boxes, run electrical wiring out into the dugouts, and then do upgrades to the PA communication systems. Currently, one PA system goes to all four fields in each cluster so each field will have its own pa go ahead mr Fair. yeah uh both uh, yes sir both uh ball field clusters will have wi-fi servicing them and roughly the area nearby and and so all of that that wi-fi fiber all of that's at bower park bowers park Yes, sir. There's already conduit out there that the city will be able to tap into and utilize. There would be a little additional that we'll have to do some boring under the road right there, but uh, compared to the cost that was fifty-five thousand proposed from Para, we think we could do the work for much cheaper. Okay. Go oh, yeah, sure. Dakota, doing these improvements, and I know Stan's here and our friends from Para are here too, but we feel i would hope the answer is yes this is going to improve our, our prospects of getting maybe some other tournaments some other things these are things that we need to do in order to make us more competitive for, yes for, and, I, and i'll lead on this I'll, I'll lead lean on stan yes. really to yes. speak to yes. that it would be i mean it's pretty much any bid outside of kind of something very small or bare minimum requirement you have that wi-fi nowadays so getting those kind of up to, up to speed and up to grade will be able to kind of that's the Dixie Youth was that was one of the main kind of draws of it was it was kind of the build of it not only was it huge but it was kind of have to you know force us to kind of get up with the times um, with it so yes it'll it'll definitely help us in the long term for sure. IT is going to maintain the system itself. We made that decision and that will if Para is having a big function on on a weekend and something goes sideways, they don't have to call out a company and hope that they will get there. 
Um, and so it, it's good all the way around. The other thing is that none of these improvements will be torn out because we have um, several million budgeted for Bowers Park improvements over the next few years. And we want the, none of these improvements will be torn out as part of those improvements. Okay, and so we never, Ms. Stamp, we never put, we never handed the check over to the Para Foundation, right? It's still in this account, 23517. Yes, sir. The way that we, um, the way that we configured the funding agreement was on a basically reimbursement basis that okay. they would have to, you know, give us cost. Um, I got you. Uh, substantiation for what they spent and the investments they put in and since nothing ever happened um, we never cut them um, any checks off of this budgeted amount so the full 235 is currently sitting still budgeted as it was um, appropriated um, and so uh, this funding agreement would just take that to a hundred thousand for the specific investments the other 135 is still going to be kind of in that Bowers Park investment account that could possibly be reallocated at another time so uh, we, we've got the para executive team over here. Uh, Brian, Mike, anything y'all want to add or ask? Okay. Uh, is there a motion to approve? Motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, motion is approved. Um, item number three, quarterly budget. Uh, Mayor and Ms. Standridge. Yes, sir. I'll begin with the general fund and education, uh, not education, ETF, elevate Tuscaloosa major funds along with water and sewer. So we'll jump. I say ETF. Uh, sometimes I still think uh, I put on my state hat and think education trust fund. Uh, when you look at our general fund major revenue budgets, uh, when you look at where we get the prime, where we our primary sources of revenue, sales tax, uh, is always a driver of that along with countywide sales tax. So nearly 50% of our revenues come from the day-to-day -day transactions in our economy. If you factor in use tax and SSUT, it climbs above, well above 50%. So that's what drives our ability to, to fund fire, fund police. As we were talking about yesterday, 41 cents out of every dollar we spend at the city of Tuscaloosa goes into fire and police. So that is certainly our, our top priorities. Um, in terms of major revenues, where we are in the budget year, we're at 67 percent of, of budget. Um, overall, uh, we estimate that if all things being equal and if we are able to average out what we are at collect, what we did last year at this time, we will finish with a $6.2 million revenue surplus on the general fund. That does not include elevate you can also see through that bar graph that every month we've been a little bit ahead of prior year um, i'm getting rumors out of anf that that may not be the case for april's collection um, it's still too early for us uh, to to know um, there'll have to be a deep dive but we do see signs of a slowing economy compared to last year the other thing I think we have to be careful of and not to have hubris about is that, yes, there is growth on the sales tax side, but how much of that's inflationary related versus actual true growth in the economy itself. Um, so certainly you want to be ahead, but how much of the like prior year inflation contributed to that? Um, again, that, that's, that's something for us to think about is we're now, uh, you know, two feet in the deep end of the pool of the fiscal year 2000 fiscal year 24 budget so in terms of general sales uh general fund sales tax collections uh 23.6 million uh was what we collected um as of march and you can see where we were this time in 22 and 21. overall we anticipate being 1.6 million above budgeted on city sales tax on use funds, uh, we're a couple hundred thousand of where we were this time last year. We anticipate uh, assuming that we we collect the equal amount prior from uh, from April to September of last year. Uh, we anticipate having a budget surplus in this line item of four hundred and sixty six thousand dollars. Can, can I ask you? A, it mm -hmm. should be a short answer question, and I may have asked it before. I think it's going to be a misheath. 
do we when we're building the revenue budget for um, the sales tax do we assume an inflation number on the front end as part of that I know we've talked about we generally take our our last years and I think we add two percent that uh, uh, we under the Mike Wright you know that was the Mike Wright formula really less on sales tax and use tax okay. we we have increased on property tax and lodging tax and SSUT just because of their growth but, but on the Becky sales or, tax, or we, Carly we, the, we, we don't assume any inflation base on the front end of that. Not, not okay. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Looking at simplified seller's use tax, which is what I, I normally refer to as an internet tax, certainly this continues to grow. And on one hand, that is a positive, and we do anticipate under SSUT a, I've got my cheat sheet in front of me. Uh, almost a million dollars above budget but I'd like to remind you what you're seeing there is about 70 cents on the dollar um, it's as if uh, you know this, this, you gave somebody a dollar and they gave you back 70 cents and you should be happy with the 70 cents that you got um, this is certainly something we're going to continue to work on I sent y'all a copy of the parka study recently 15% of gross sales now in Alabama total come out of um, internet-based sales, and that number is going to continue to increase. If you know, if our share of that continues to be less and less, that will continue to be a problem for municipalities across the state, especially larger municipalities. Remember, 68% of points of sale in Tuscaloosa County take place within the city's limits. Um, but we don't receive 68% of the share of the county SSUT appropriation. Um, that, that's something that long range, um, myself and others that fall behind me will have to certainly continue to work through to resolve. Um, on property tax, we're a little bit ahead of this time last year. The majority of property tax has been collected. Uh, Becky, in her wisdom, believes we will finish about $166,000 over budget by the time it's all said and done. I don't know about you, but have any of you got any appraisal complaints? Mine went up 23%. Uh, mine went up, and I've had a lot of people contact me via email or text, and I've um, why the city did that and I, <laughs> why did we do I, I don't know why we did it we, we didn't even realize we did it you know um, but we, we sent them some to the county uh, tax appraisers office uh, general fund rental uh, tangible tax we anticipate a small budget surplus of 52,000 we're at 53 percent of budget and are a little bit ahead of where we were this time last year so that'll shake out at, if we're at 53%. Can you back up one? Mm -hmm. And some so of these. Kind of a million one, a million two? Is that? The overall budget for right. rental tangible this year, we budgeted 1,154,000. Okay. Okay. A lot of these, uh, not a lot of these, but some of these taxes are, don't come in 12 increments. Um, they're collected over 12 months, but larger shares come in different time periods we certainly believe lodging tax will be one of these it, although it's at 48 percent today uh, we do anticipate that lodging tax will exceed budget albeit by $125,000 if we collect equal to this time last year in fiscal year 22. we budgeted how much growth this is one of the few line items we budgeted growth i think So, it, and I want to make sure I don't, I, because I do confuse the rental, that, that rental tangible tax, that's the one on rental properties, right? No, sir. That's okay. like um, I'm renting a forklift or a, 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 you know, piece of equipment. Okay. And, but we're, we're coming up to the rental license. So we're, the next we're one just actually. over 5 million on short term lodging tax, right? On lodging tax, um, we also have a short-term rental category as well. Oh, we this break out the lodging. Hotel. These are hotels. Right. I got you. I thought, man, we're collecting five, 
plus million on and, game day rentals. And, and a couple of other notes, TTS could probably direct us to no occupancy. Um, again, you may have some inflationary pressures here that may make that number a little bit higher. Um, so that's something as we get into the budget time, we, we will coordinate with TTS, look at occupancy. The other can be timing of Alabama football games. Um, if you have, sometimes you may have two in September. You have all the big ones after the end of the fiscal year. And, and that can, that can create some timing difference. This year we have three home games in September. And I think all three are pretty significant. That Texas one will be, it'll make LSU 2019 and LSU 2011 look like a, a, a one of my flag football games I coach. Um, it'll be small but, well, compared we to We actually, and on a weekend, the economic impact of that, what, what was that number like on a football weekend? Is it says they normally say about 20 plus million dollars economic impact. Now, we don't receive that. Contrary to what pe people hear that number so and they think, oh, the city gets money. No, we normally get about 3% of that. So that would be about $600,000. <clears> but you've got to remember, we also expend about $350,000 in personnel costs. So we certainly still make a profit, but it's not clear. It's not the clear kind of profit. The other thing is, and I call it, you can only put so much water in a bathtub. We only have so many hotel rooms, so many restaurants so many places you can spend money and when you have 120,000 versus 150,000 you're not really going to pick up that much more in revenues but you will pick up a lot more in expenses that's the time that Texas weekend yeah. yeah see that's the projected Friday that Tiger Woods facility is supposed to open yeah but this this year is a good thing for us as we've got five we always have seven home games, but we have five really good games. Five good as because you've got Tennessee, you got LSU, Arkansas, homecoming, Ole Miss, and Texas. I mean, the Texas game is huge, but LSU and Tennessee will be. Yeah. That Tennessee game is going to be back to being the way it was when I was little. It it's going to be a lot of fun for our fans and guests and our citizens. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of work by your departments. Oh, absolutely. Um, Airport's going to be busy. Yeah. Some of these games. I absolutely know the Texas game may be the largest airport drive. I know Texas A&M is normally the biggest airport day of the year. They, we're hearing that Texas may be that. We're also getting a lot of economic development requests. People who all of a sudden are looking at Tuscaloosa and like to come to the Alabama Texas game. It's amazing yeah. how, how, that how, how all that all that works. All of a sudden they, they want to come see the city on Saturday, the, the day the game happens. <laughs> Um, so the next one is the, the rental tax, dwelling tax. Uh, right now we're anticipating a, a surplus of $174,000. We're a little bit ahead of budget this year. It, overall, the, the total budget on that, Mr. Busby, is this year $3.8 million. That's 1%. 3.8. 3.8. And we've been in the low threes, haven't we? Yes, sir. It's also After the hike. Well, the hike is separated out. The 2%, which is on the 200 and more apartments, which may be, I don't think, is included in this slide. It's not. It's, there's not a slot for that. But the budget is 1.7. It's, it's what? There's not a slot for it, but the, the budget is 1.7 million for the two percent Okay. That's on top of the three-ish? Yes, sir. The yes. 1.7 is on top of the 3.8. Yes, I'm yes. very good. So we collect about 4.5 million, a little over between both. Short-term rental, I, I believe this, this number is encouraging in the sense that our collections continue to pick up, but I don't believe it is a reflection of what we see out there in terms of short-term rentals. Um, our team does work this, but it'll be have something we will have to continue to, to work on uh, we hear, I don't know if Mr. Adams hears what we hear, but the uh, hoteliers, I would imagine, say the same things to them as they believe this is the Airbnbs, the VRBOs are making a dent in their room nights. Um, if they are, and you juxtapose what we're collecting there versus, which is at a much higher rate, is it 11% on a STR? Or, um, right. 
Same as Lodge. But we do 100% Um, you know, I'm not saying there should be comparable because there's not 3,000 plus hotel rooms, but you know, I do think that's something. As we look over the horizon on potential revenue that we're not collecting, this could be something the council wants to focus on in the future. It certainly would take more enforcement to do that. Um, I want to brag. I don't know if we have a slide on audits. Do we have a? I don't think we do. Before before we leave, can can you back up that one? Yes, sir. Still got short term. So I, I suspect the hoteliers' complaint about their that the short term rentals are making a dent is probably true because I think the pricing mechanism is temporarily out of whack if you compare if, if you're bringing a family group of eight nine whatever down here and you compare trying to get hotel rooms versus a, a home you'll the pricing mechanism right now is very much in favor of the short-term rentals if that suits your needs yes. but that's going up quickly and so the the inflation the price inflation we're seeing on those rental houses is probably far in excess of the price inflation we're seeing in general prices around here it's bordering on obscene and so i'm on the, the i'm on the good end of that but are just the hotel rooms are just i can't imagine uh, paying for a hotel room I mean tonight the, in texas now and it'll be multiple nights Three night minimum. Three night minimum. So that'd be $6,000 probably. Gee, that's terrible. Well, they'll pay 7000 for a big house that weekend. I'm sorry. Go ahead, man. No, no. It's, <laughs> it's, it's just hard. It's hard so it's, there's not a slide, but I really want to commend uh, Ms. Standridge and Ms. Chief and, their, and, and Mr. Smalley and their entire team. Um, our audit budget this year was $250,000. We anticipate an um, $840,000 uh, that we will end the year on. Um, if, and a lot of that has to do with, in my opinion, um, we're focusing on going after more of the big, bigger out of town who have both a, a hybrid of a internet and brick and mortar business as well. And they've done a really good job of coordinating with OCA on that. And so they're, they're to be commended. That is significant. And please express your our thanks to your team. And, and Kurt's in here. You know, he's one that leads our audit team. Um, and I, you know, I can't say enough great things about the work that they do, that the um, amount of activity that happens in our economy that we do not know about that does not touch us, they try and as much of that as possible um, and that's really where you will see the audit revenues come in to play um, you know not obviously not everybody wants to come in uh, report to the government about the money that they're making in our <laughs> in our community and so they really are going to be the, the ones that that try and get everybody to play by the same rules and have a level playing well I think every taxpayer um, most taxpayers in our community that wake up every day go go to work they invest in their homes they deserve to know that everyone's paying their fair share. And I'm really proud that our audit team uh, is ensuring that that happens. And, and we need it because you, you hear about the challenges that we face. And certainly the taxpayers want us to make certain that everyone's, they don't want to pay any more until they're certain that we're collecting every bit that should be paid. And our audit team has done a really good job and I'm, I'm thankful for it. And I know that that is not an easy assignment. Business license, which is always a reflection of a year in the past. Um, we are at 100% of budget, a little bit ahead of where we were this time last year. So as we look in the rear view mirror at business licenses as a whole, we anticipate being 420,000 ish above budget when all said and done. We still got a few more months of collection, but for the most part, all business licenses have been paid. 
this is the one that if if I were in sitting in your shoes and you're going to get our budget in August that you should be concerned about is our building permits. Our building permit numbers are down considerably from where they were. Now the council did in its budget be reduce the amount of building permits. We only anticipate being down budget wise by $15,000. But what we believe last year is holding true into this year. There is not a lot of commercial and residential building as what we've seen in the past. Some of that's going to be because we're in a digital economy. You're, you're not going to have university malls of the future. People are never going, you're not going to have the big commercial developments, which are the bread and butter of municipalities in Alabama anymore because of our tax structure. Um, but even with that said, I think we, there is a definite slowdown. Certainly, the, if the Fed's goal was to slow it, slow it down by bringing up in, interest rates, they have done it, at least in our little corner of the world. I think we have to keep this in mind as we're thinking about the 24 budget. Um, it, that probably needs to govern us and not being too ambitious in our revenue line items, um, assuming much growth. I think we've got another 12 months of a wait and see economy and if anybody knows if their crystal ball is working we certainly would be interested in in what they think is going to happen um, but right now I think it's a, there's a lot of uncertainty and this this uh, this adds to that uncertainty in my opinion any questions on this um, Ashley and her team they always do a deep dive prior to budget and we will give you data on this kind of let you get a little uh, so, uh, an inside look of the breakdown of residential and commercial as we get into the budget season. County sales tax and uh, certainly mirrors the cities. The little bit of difference with the county sales tax is they, they throw in their use tax with it. We anticipate being 1.1 million above budget. This is really good for not only the county, but for our city schools, county schools, TICRIC, DCH, Northport. By the way, SSUT doesn't get broken out by those. It, it just goes directly to the county. So whereas the county sales tax, we get 19% of on the county distribution of SSUT, we get nothing. Our C schools get nothing. And again, that's, a, that's another long-term consideration we'll have to work through. Um, looking to elevate uh, as we um, as it mirrored the general fund, you see that compared to last year, month by month, uh, we're, we're, we're streaming ahead. Elevate is primarily a sales and use tax fund, so it's, it's going to reflect what you see on the general fund, sales tax side. Again, 53% of budget. Uh, Becky anticipates will be about $400,000 above budget on sales tax, and that we will be 118000 above budget on use. Um, the water and sewer side, we've got some promising news. Uh, revenues are climbing up. You see that 39% number and you think, well, that doesn't equal the number of months. We're getting into our money months with summer. So certainly use will be going up. Our average daily uh, treatment of water combined with plot and um, love has been over 30 the last few days. And so, you know, not that we're pro drought, but uh, dry weather certainly helps um, in terms of revenue sales, both on the water side and sewer side. And that'll be the headline tomorrow and <laughs> thread. Mayor's pro drought. Pro drought. Yeah. Mayor's um, my bill's not up $20 a month. <laughs> Well, my question is, why hasn't it gone up 30? Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Um, but in all seriousness, we're, we're, we're seeing some good numbers. Certainly, the council's action that it took to invest in the 10-year plan and to abide by what the, uh, what the, what the economy is doing and what inflation is doing has certainly helped in our water and sewer side. You see the water revenues sewer revenues are going to mirror pretty much that um, so overall on the water and sewer side um, compared to previous years feel really good i also want to commend kimberly and her team on <coughs> the billing side um, 
since you allowed us to um, go back to a utility structure, um, that has really been good for us. And certainly, you know, that's one of the lessons we learned, I learned um, coming out of IPS. And um, Kimberly has done a really good job, much more hyper-focused, solving a lot of issues. And I think that's gonna continue to pay dividends for us as well. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Certainly, uh, Ms. Standridge and Ms. Sheep, they're the experts, and they can go into any technical details to any questions you might have. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. I asked mine along the way. Gentlemen, any questions? Ms. Connor? I'm good. And just for Council's awareness on the expenditure side, um, you know, a number of the city departments are um, tracking a little bit <coughs> below where they would be percentage-wise for budget. And so with the mayor's you know, analysis that he mentioned for being approximately $6 million over budget in the revenue projection, so that $6 million would be good, we should be able to hold steady on expenditure. Is that across the general fund or just for the sales tax? That's across the general fund. So this is for, <coughs> for expenditure operations. So if, if, if revenues hold true to projection and we end at $6 million over budget, that means $6 million to the good for us, and our expenditures hold steady at just meeting budget or even a little bit below, we hope that that $6 million will be able to translate into a general fund surplus. That's the general idea. And, and it's a preview to the our goal is to present the budget on August 15th um, we've moved up our timetable to try and that's good. certainly you know statutorily we have to the last day in August but we're going to work and endeavor ourselves to have it by the 15th um, this year's budget is quite frankly it's going to be it's going to be very vanilla compared to what you've seen the past two years um, a lot of that is due is that the things that you've initiated now are in the mix and they're moving along and, and we're preparing down that road. <laughs> the other is that 6.2 million may sound like a lot of money, but in a city with 1,400 employees, that's not. Um, and just the employee cost alone will eat up, if not the majority of all of that 6.2. And that's before you get into pay increases for your employees um, and before you even touch technology, vehicles, equipment, agency funding, et cetera. So you will likely see within your budget actually reductions in department head expenditure line items. So it, it's, it's gonna be, again, hopefully next month our revenues are even better and we can project to seven million then the next month. And you will have two more months than I will but 6.2 million is great, but it's not, I, I just don't want, when the public hears, and really the agencies that we fund, when they hear 6.2 million, they, yeah. For us, that's, that's not a lot of growth that you can then go out and do what we did last year when we were, what, 15, 16, in growth. And that's the, that's the economic situation. By the way, I'd rather be in that economic situation than a lot of cities who are negative and then still have to deal with all the things that we just talked about. Thank you. Thank you Thank all. You. Uh, Ms. Sanders, one last question as we go out. Regarding the slowdown that we're starting to see in the, the building permits, what's the single best weather balloon we can watch to get a reading on that as we move forward. For business permits or for economic activity? For, for recessionary environment. So I will say that, and, and Becky will probably laugh at me when I say this, but whenever sales, sales and use tax dollar amounts come in every month, um, literally there, it will be the 16th or 17th of the month and I'll be like kind of jonesing for like, what, what are we looking at? What's, a, what's coming in? Sales and use tax are always gonna be the barometer. Um, you know, we will have, and maybe Trent can speak a little bit more to this, but we have stragglers that will report in a little bit later. Um, you kind of try to make up for that when you're thinking about, did we make budget this, this month? Um, and so, to me, the, like the mayor alluded to, the month of April is concerning to me. It is not a trend by any means, but the fact that it is one month in our, in our rear view mirror where we have had 
a deficit, um, a deficit or, or a slowdown in growth that is concerning. Um, you know, previous months we've seen a little up, a little down. And everything um, we saw here was that was to the end of March, right? Yes, to the sir. end of March, yes, sir. So, um, you know, April activity kind of being a little, it it's down. It's not a lot down. Um, so y'all already see in April, right? Did that, that's how the, yes, sir. That is April. So April's down a little bit. It's not down a whole lot. When May comes in, if what that's do, also down again, they haven't provided me the final number yet. What do you What do you think that number will be, assuming no other stragglers come in? Eighty thousand. So what's that? A percent? Two percent? That's less than one percent. It's less than one percent of a slowdown. Um, it, yeah. So uh, again, it's not the it's not the magnitude that concerns me. It's the activity of that that concerns the loss me. Of velocity. And the fact that you know when when May comes in, obviously we'll work to see if there's a trend on that. Um, I, 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 from my general walking around sense, I think that this summer seems busier out on the street than it was last summer. That is again my personal perception. Um, Hopefully the numbers might play that out. We'll keep you guys updated if, if that does. Okay. And this is my pitch again on SSUT and why I think it's so important in the years ahead that we discuss this with our legislative delegation is that 20 to 25% of our population is between the ages of 18 to 24. They average about eight hours a week purchasing goods online. Whereas we own, where in brick and mortar, we get $3.57 per purchase for every $100. When they go online, we get seven cents. Sales taxes are still our barometer because we know 85% of purchases are through sales tax and use tax. But as that number continues to creep up, how we pay the bills through, through, you know, through sales taxes is gonna diminish if SSUT is not addressed we don't have any other way to go. We can't increase business licenses. We're capped under state law. We have a local act that, that prohibits any sort of um, occupational tax. Um, sales tax, we're at 10% and shouldn't go up. We're, you know, for now, I think we are where we need to be on that. There's really not a lot of places to go. So I would just, I think it's really as a council member, we'd ask that you continue to talk to our legislators about this because that's money you've earned and those are services that you're providing that someone else is it's redistribute it's redistribution of wealth and, and it's it, it is to the rural areas away it's, from the it's basically area. to the rural areas and it's basically protecting out-of-state companies I mean you're we're, we're we're saying Amazon's is more important than Amy's florist it's to and the rural areas and it's to the counties as well I mean let's not take the counties out of the equation that they get a number of, you know, Tuscaloosa County is, a, is an outlier. Tuscaloosa County gets 3% of sales tax, whereas most counties have a half of a percent or a 1% sales tax, but yet they're, the SSUT is distributed by population. And, and the cities within those counties, population is factored into the distribution method. Sorry, that's my soapbox for that one. I'll get off that one. But it, that is why you see the larger cities that are really beginning to talk about this because you can't sustain population growth while at the same time that population is buying their goods online and you're not receiving the benefit of those dollars um, population should result in revenue that pays for the services so um, again it's not an issue for today or tomorrow but it will be an issue as we begin the next decade and it's very important that the next four or five years we get this solved um, so we can you know continue to fund services and have a great quality of life People want the city to do the incentives for Mercedes. People want the city to keep an airport open. People want the city to provide all these other services. Um, but those come with a cost. And so we have to, as we grow, we have to have the revenues to continue to fund those things to make them happen in our community. Anyway, I can't, I don't ever miss a chance, Ms. No, Bernardi, no, and we appreciate it actually. Uh, um, to talk about SSUT because it's important. All right. Uh, gentlemen, any other business to be brought before the committee? No, sir. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Sir. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay.